experimenting with my Commodore 64 Ultimate. This is a stock C64 emulated in Vice, and this is a C64 Ultimate. This runs at 50 frames a second. Actually, it's taking less than a frame to render the entire uh, FMV sequence. The white bar is color RAM copying, and then the red time indicates how long it takes to decompress the next frame. So running in Vice, you can see that the stock C64 runs quite slowly, probably at roughly five frames a second. Each frame takes between three and a half K to about six K, considering that the full bitmap screen takes 10 kilobytes of data. This is quite a good compression saving. All of this is running from a cartridge as well. So all of the data is on an Easy Flash 3 cartridge or equivalent. Doesn't really matter what type of cartridge it is, to be honest. So there's no REU, there's no uh, DMA. It's just code doing this code, running in RAM, pulling data from normal boring cartridge banks. So I'm quite happy with the speed on this. So the next thing that we're going to look at is this is an open side border just using the CPU. There's no interrupts, there's no timers or anything else like that being used. There's no stable uh, IRQ code that you would normally need. Well, on a stock C64, you need a cycle accurate, uh, stable raster interrupt to, well, or a stable timer derived interrupt to open the side border because you need to tweak the side border the screen width at exactly on the right hand side border. The start of the green column of pixels there is actually where I'm setting the screen background color and then tweaking the screen width. And then what looks like the next character along is when I'm resetting the screen width back to normal. And that's how you open the side borders. But actually there's a ton of instructions in 64 megahertz mode running in just that small column of green pixels. On a normal Commodore 64, eight pixels horizontally is one megahertz, which is one clock cycle of the CPU. So at 64 megahertz, then there's 64 times as many instructions running in the eight pixels wide time period than there is on the normal Commodore 64. So Crazy Me has got to thinking actually that we could probably build up a color screen just by changing the background screen color and, and making it look like there's extra graphics behind the, the character graphics, right? Because there seems to be ample enough time to just use software to, to actually create background graphics from, from background screen color changes. So when we look at a similar routine on the Commodore 64, trying to do it just with the CPU, we can see all of the green lines indicating where the screen width needs to be tweaked are all kind of like messed up. Uh, none of them are really stable. Uh, there's, there's no consistency, right? So you cannot do this approach on a normal C64 of just by using the, the CPU because the C60, well, the stock C64, which runs at one megahertz, uh, doesn't have enough resolution in the in the CPU execution to be able to precisely time the the correct cycle time, cycle accurate timing for tweaking the screen width on the right hand border edge. There, you need to have a stable IRQ setup. You need to have like a slide, well, a, a slide and an end of line test usually, and then a final uh, cycle wobble or jitter uh, defeating check. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the, you know, the normal stock C64 is, is not fast enough with the CPU to, to do this entirely in software. But as we've just seen, the ultimate C64, or C64 ultimate, sorry, rather, is actually a lot faster when it's running at 64 megahertz. So you can just do all of this in software. As usual, I'll put the source code up in my GitHub repository and put links in the video description below. So this is the C64 cycle jitter example. So it just basically shows you that the C64 code cannot really do this. Uh, but the 
C64 Ultimate running in 64 megahertz mode, you can actually have, I actually had to add in a huge amount of uh, delay functions to just have enough time delay to precisely time the opening and closing or well, the opening of the side borders by, by tweaking the screen width. So I'll put this source code in my source code repository as well. And I hope you find it useful. I mean, I think this has potential. So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are always very much appreciated. I have an itch project page where you can download my software and optionally send me a nice donation, which is always appreciated. Take care, have a great day, evening or night, wherever you are.